Scott Barkham manages Rich Medina, who is a friend and an incredible DJ, and we did a booking with uh, Rich Medina a couple years ago. He fell in love with the venue, and we started chopping it up, talking about uh, projects that they were working on, and Scott had said, I just signed this band. <laughs> Cut to him sending me the music and I couldn't even kind of wrap my head around what I was listening to. Six months, eight months later, they were playing at the Cosmopolitan and they were literally playing to three bartenders. They were so magnetic. How they were able to completely tune out the fact that there was absolutely nobody there and nobody was fucking paying attention, but they almost kind of utilized it like, all right, we're gonna do like a really dope rehearsal right now. Given the fact that we're just a 300 cap venue, I had a rig coming in, lighting and stacks, a four hour rehearsal, people running in and out. I love sound check almost more than I love the show. You've got a GoPro taking a photo every 30 seconds for the rest of the night. It's fucking amazing. We'll, 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 we'll time lapse that together and it'll get off. No, no, once we turn them on, we're gonna do it on the bar and. Should we turn them on now, see what it looks like, so that in case there's any issues, we work it out now. It was a large undertaking. That's what I'm creating in the land of Oz, is real magic, not tomfoolery. <laughs> Even though they knew that it was a small cap venue going into it and that it was in a funky neighborhood and it wasn't like Vegas, Vegas and it wasn't a big room like Gramercy Call or, you know, a lot of the larger places that they played. When you go and see them at a large venue, they're on a pedestal of sorts, you know what I'm saying? And so you're, you're idolizing them in a different way. allows artists to have a connection that a lot of other venues don't. It's like almost this secret society of, if you weren't here, you fucking missed it. There's this picture on Facebook, and it had the Hiatus Coyote band chilling and they had a bunch of arcade cabinets around them. I was like, well, what, what's this about? Oh, shit. What was that crazy? Oh, I see. I see what you mean. 
So right then and there, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna pay more attention than they're gamers. It's definitely a big deal for me when like someone super creative and just who's toured the world. And then I see them lose their shit, you know, in a venue in downtown Las Vegas. If you look at tours of cool musical acts, I'm not trying to be a music elitist by any way, but like, just look at some tours and it's like, LA, beep. Phoenix, Arizona, New Mexico, beep. San Diego, California. It just always goes over our city. The more variety and the more curveballs you could throw at a crowd, it gives it a lot more value. And, you know, just to go out to a nightclub and just hear the same bullshit over and over again, if you want that top 40 stuff, look, that's cool. There's places for that. But to focus on being a music venue by way of almost education, it, it just gives us that much more of a product to provide. This is the perfect place for it. You have so many different kinds of people here. Someone's gonna be like, oh, this is fucking cool. Versus the, where's David Guetta? Once the show starts, there is a, a spiritual takeover that happens that is not even within her control. It, to go from being so incredibly powerful and then be charming and then be coy, you don't find that many women who are able to be so honest and so truthful um, by way of being vulnerable and exposing every single layer that they have, every performance. <laughs> the hot dog head dress. <laughs> I didn't even see that. And she has an extremely fascinating, you know, backstory. You know, she was an orphan and, and she was, you know, had a really challenging family situation very, very driven and connected with animals, which is always something that I, even if I don't know, I'm just drawn to it automatically. Aside the fact that the bitch was like, okay, I'm gonna put this down and now I'm gonna bang out the guitar. And you know what? Now I'm gonna put this down and now I'm gonna get on the keys. There is nothing of this earth that is about her. She is absolutely not of this earth. So this cat walks over, he was from Phoenix. And he was like, yo, I lost my ID at the spot. I came over from Phoenix, I want to see the show. And I was like, well, you dressed the part. I'm losing my liquor license for telling you this, but yeah, we just let him in. He had like six or seven of his friends. They all came out for the weekend and they all came out just to see this show. They didn't know anything about my place at all. They were fans of Hayatus Coyote. <laughs> 